Hi, my name is Fred, and I'm one of the chief bloggers at RodsonShots.com. And I'm here to talk to you this evening about my continued uh, discussion of conceal and carry. Tonight I'm going to discuss the mentality of conceal and carry. Well, I could do like Paul Helmke in the Brady campaign, and I could give you sound bite solutions to conceal and carry, or the mentality of it. Or I could be like Mike Bloomberg and his group Mayors Against Illegal Guns and give you even more soundbite solutions to uh, the mentality of conceal and carry. Okay, so here you go. I'll give you a couple of soundbite solutions to the mentality of conceal and carry. Gun control means hitting your target. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Keep means I've got one, it's mine, you can't take it from me. Bear means I've got it on me right now. Okay, there's my soundbite solutions to gun control and the mentality of conceal and carry. Alright, having said that, now we'll try a little bit more of a complex solution to conceal and carry mentality. Uh, I've been asked several times, um, once when I first started carrying by a little old lady who said to me, do you really think you need that? Because at the time I was new to conceal and carry and I was profiling pretty badly. And I said to the lady that if I thought I needed it, I would have stayed home. And you know, that pretty much is how that conversation ended. But people have asked me many, many times, how do I live with myself carrying a firearm in public? Or how do I live with myself uh, knowing that I may have to take another human life? I can tell you it's not a comforting thought. I can tell you that the thought in of itself uh, scares the bejesus out of me. That I might actually have to kill someone. And then... I think about the fact that that person forced me into that decision uh, with their actions or with their um, presence in a particular place. And I think about the lives of my wife, children, even complete strangers at times, and what it means to have my wife, children, or as I said, a member of the general public still breathing in an Atomar, as opposed to someone who has chosen to do harm to others as a way of making a living. And when I put it in that prospectus, um, I rather just have know for a fact that my wife and children are still breathing and that they're going to live to see another day, even if that means it costs me my life. Or, you know, i rather know that someone gets to go home to their family that was doing nothing more than going to work, or um, possibly even going to school, church, whatever. I know that sounds, at first, to be very vicious, but... And I'm sure I could be painted as a tyrant by the Brady campaign or mayors against illegal guns or any number of anti-gunners. I could be painted as a lot of things. Um, but that's how I deal with that situation. I know that my first choice is not uh, to eradicate human life, but uh, to protect it and to protect uh, innocent people from uh, people trying to do bad things with firearms, particularly my f wife and children. I would, like I said, gladly sacrifice every drop of my blood to protect them. Uh, their lives mean far more to me than my own does. Um, so that's the kind of mentality I use to justify uh, my use of concealed and carried firearms is first for the defense of myself, my wife, my children, and then for the defense of the general public. And I can give you a lot more soundbite solutions, like I'd rather be judged by 12 and car than carried by 6, or I could tell you that 
you know, people don't kill people, guns kill people. <laughs> but that would be the Brady campaign. Sorry about that. Uh, I don't take that view. I can I can lay a firearm in front of anybody and leave it there for a thousand years, and the only thing that person's going to die of is old age, unless someone comes, picks the weapon up, and uses it. Uh, I believe greatly in individual responsibility and individuals taking responsibility for their actions. So, um, once again though, I am going to point out briefly that I'm not a firearms instructor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a psychologist. And do realize that yes, there will be some long-term impacts to deciding to use a firearm for self-defense or in defense of others. I will never sit here and tell you that seeing things like that is easy. I will never tell you the decision to pull the trigger is going to be easy. Because those decisions will not be easy and they will be permanent and long-lasting. As I've talked about some of the decisions before in some of my previous blogs on Conceal and Carry, Okay, so that's the soundbite solutions to the mentality of conceal and carry. Now you know that all of us mean, evil, terrible gun owners out there are not vicious psychopaths. They're just itching to pull the trigger on somebody or itching to test our reflexes against another person to see if we can't kill them in the process. Um, <clears throat> we're not the gunfighters of the Old West. We don't... Uh, walk down the street at high noon and challenge each other to life and death duels in the middle of the street. Um, we are citizens. We're average people. We are law-abiding citizens. We, God-fearing most of us. So, you know, we're not what the media portrays. And you have to, you wouldn't have to go any further than to your local gun range to find that out. We're not monsters. We're not these people that are just itching to pull the trigger on somebody. I have no desire whatsoever. I would be happy if I get old, gray, and to my grave without having to ever pull out my firearm and use it to defend myself, my wife, or my children, or the public in general. I'd be just as happy if not happier, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, yes, I like my guns. I like my firearms. Uh, I enjoy cleaning them. I enjoy shooting them. I enjoy uh, shooting sports. But one of the sports I do not enjoy is one-on-one -on -one single combat uh, for the purpose of killing another human being. And I would never tell anyone <clears throat> that that would be one of my first things I wake up in the morning and go, Oh boy, let's go out and get into a roaming gun battle in the middle of the road. Uh, I know that's how the lame scream media would like to portray it. I know that's how Paul Helmke and Mike Bloomberg and their groups would like to portray it. But we are not that. We are people that want to protect ourselves, our property, our children, the public in general. And... That's all we are. It's just common people that have the, um, no, what's a nice politically correct way of putting it, have the fortitude to defend ourselves and <clears throat> our loved ones and the general public. Well, that's the mentality of self defense. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, feel free to leave me comment, comments and uh, feel free to let us know what you think about the blog. My name's Fred, and uh, again, I'm one of the chief bloggers here at Rots and Shots. You have a great night.